Hi everyone, this is Carlos Carpintero from Autodesk. In today's video, we're going to learn how to create a shader for a hardwood floor using mainly OSL maps and the advanced wood map. If you're looking for a scene to work with, you can grab the one I have at turbosquid.com and it was created by an artist called Anania Iyer. It's free to download. So first, create yourself a physical material, assign it to the floor, and we can isolate the floor. Next, create yourself an advanced wood map. If you don't see it in the list, go to your render setup window. You're probably rendering with Arnold, so you need to go to system tab and turn on legacy 3ds max map support. Create a wood, attach it to the base color. You'll see that the first thing that we need to change is the direction of the grain. So let's do that now. I'll go to X. Let's set a few other parameters. Let's turn off rays. Oops. Right. Okay. Now let's create two more. So the reason why we're creating more than one wood map is because if we were to use only the one map, then the grain of wood would look like one piece across the whole floor. By creating several wood maps and by changing the parameters in them slightly, we're going to give the impression that each of our hardwood floor boards will be coming from different trees or different parts of the same tree. So this we're just going to change the Z scale slightly and the overall scale slightly. Right, so let's set those aside for now. Next, we're going to be doing the actual floorboards. So you want to create yourself a simple tile. Plug that in. As well, you'll need a UVW row offset. Let's do the simple tile first. The scale we leave at one. I only want one tile in U and V. The reason is I'll be doing all my tiling in the UVW map. Gap width, let's reduce to 0 0.03. I don't want my corners to be round at all, so that's going to be zero. And the rest we can leave the same. Let's plug in our UVW map. Let's change its scale to 0.1. Now the tiling in X, you can think of as a control for the length of your boards. So I'm going to decrease this to 0.7. The tiling in Y, you can think of as the control for the width of your boards. I want to increase mine to 4. If we zoom in, we can see that the size of our boards now is correct, but obviously there's a problem with the start and end of each boards. They're lining up almost perfectly with each other. This is where the power of this particular map comes in. Let's increase the row count to 10. The row offset to 4. And the random to 5. So now if we look close, we can see that all the start and ends of the boards are pretty much random wherever you look, which is exactly what we want. Next, create yourself a 1 of 5 color. Plug that into the base color. And then plug the index of the simple tile 
into the index of the 105 color. Change your start index to 1, and the number of inputs to 5. The reason why we're starting the index at 1 is because we want the outside range color to fall between the cracks. For now, we're going to set this to a slightly brownish color. There. As you can see now, all the floorboards are 105 color throughout the whole model. It gives a nice, even dis uneven distribution of the colors. If you want even more randomness, you could choose a 1 of 10 color, which um, would result in less repetition. But obviously, there's more setup because you have 10 slots to fill. For my example, I'm going to stick with the 1 of 5. Now, if we were to plug in our three maps into the slots, into the inputs as they are, we would have a different grain of wood, but the actual color of, of the floorboards would be the same throughout, so not very interesting. To help with that, we're going to change the values of the wood with a math color multiply color node. I'm going to create three more of these. I'm going to keep the first slot with the default color of the wood. And then the others plug into A. And then you can control the value of your wood by B. So in this case, 0.5 is cutting the color in half. I'll leave that by default. My second map, I'm going to plug into the second and third multipliers. And this map, I'll increase the value to 0.7, let's say 0.65. Third map, 0.85. Actually, let's say 0.8. And the last one, we'll put it at 0.9. And now we can pl mul plug in the multiply nodes into the 105 color. So this one is going to the first input, input 0. Let's put this map into input 3, sorry, input 2, this one. We'll go into input one. This one will be input three. And the last one will be input four. Now, if we look at our floor, we have a nice variation in tones of the brown. And as well, because we're using the three wood maps, the grain is also going to be unequal between the boards. Awesome. OK, so that's it for the color. Now let's move on to doing the specular and the roughness. It's basically the same procedure. We're going to grab two more 1 of 5 colors. This one here will be for the roughness. We'll change the index to one, number of five inputs to use, sorry, number of inputs to use is five, but the outside of range color we're going to change to white since we want the gaps between the boards to be totally rough. Same thing for the bump, except here we're going to leave it black since there will be no bump between the boards. Now we're going to be using the roughness and the bump from the wood maps. So all we need to do is connect them in the same order as they're connected in the color. 
So this first wood map, as we said, is input 0 and input 2. Let's do that now. Input 0 and input 2. Let's connect the index before I forget. This map is to input 1 and input 3. So let's do that. And this one is input 4. The same for bump. This is input 0 and input 2. 1 and 3. And here, 4. Let's connect these to the right slots. Roughness map and bump map. You can reduce the physical material bump to 0 0.15. 0 0.3 is the default. I find the 0.15 values uh, gives a good result. So one last thing we can do is create a displacement map. What that will do is give some separation to the boards to give more, uh, more of a realistic effect. So one more time, we can actually duplicate this 105 color. This time, we're going to disconnect the maps since we don't actually need we're only looking for delineation or different to make the gap between the boards more pronounced. So we can actually change the color here to all white. And we're going to change the outside range color to a 0.5 gray because we just want the displacement to be slightly below what the floor is. We won't be plugging it into the displacement map. What we're going to be doing is on your floor, create yourself an Arnold property, turn on displacement, and here you have no you have um, a slot for a displacement map. Click on Use Map, and then drag your displacement map onto it. Next, you'll need to create some more subdivisions. So enable, and in my particular case, I'm going to choose Linear, and I know that 11 iterations will give me the result I want. And that's it. So let me unhide all my other geometry. Go to my camera. And I'm going to take a render of my room. And let's see the results. I'll be back in a minute. So here's the final image. This is looking really, really great. One thing I did change, though, is our displacement value. I set a value of 0.8. The original value was slightly too strong. Looking at the overall floor, though, you can see the color variation has a really nice variety, variety to it. And looking at where the light is reflected from the lamps in the window, you can see how the grain of the wood breaks up the floor flatness really nicely, especially in this section here and this section here. One last thing before we go. Let's say you're happy with the floor overall, but you want to make some slight changes to it. You can still do that without affecting any work that you've done in the shader already. You can grab a tweak levels code a map, drop it in between the 105 color and the base color slot. 
The tweak level map lets you modify the hue, saturation, and value of colors. Let's make an exaggerated change. And let's say you don't like it, you simply just remove it from the shader and you're back to where you were. So it's a very easy way to make overall changes to your shader without affecting any work that you've done or risk losing any work that you've done. And that's it. I really hope you like this video and that you can use it in your personal projects. Have a great day. Bye-bye.